Okay, because of the many requests I've had, I am starting on the Gorilla Mask uh, from Planet of the Apes, uh, sort of a general Ursus based on his prosthetics. Uh, and as you'll find as I sculpt it, why I'm doing it before the Telosian, um, I just wanted to say to Lou, who I know is watching this, thanks. Yeah, this showed up today, unannounced, from UPS. Guy said, I've got a package for you. And this is what it is. Now, you all know how much I love 2001 and how if it wasn't for 2001, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. Thank you, Stanley and everybody else involved. But I love this movie. It's my favorite movie of all time. And I don't care if you don't like it. I don't care if you do like it. It is my favorite movie of all time. I think it's one of the most significant films ever made. And it's one of the few things I do like to collect still from because I'm kind of done with collecting. But this is incredible. Thank you, Lou, so much. You know how much I love you. My God, now I have to build the darn thing. Ah, well, I thought I'd show you uh, a little bit of how I do a Planet of the Apes prosthetic. Well, actually, we're gonna do another in a series of the three apes from Planet of the Apes. I've done the chimp, you've seen that. There's the picture on the screen. Isn't it wonderful? I think it is. <laughs> And uh, they had a lot of requests for the gorilla and also the orangutan. So the gorilla has been the most popular requested one. So I'm gonna do a general Ursus. I've got uh, pictures of the, uh, of the uh, prosthetic over here. Now the computer to go by and I got several of them from different angles and stuff. Uh, I've done it before in the past. In fact, my career started as a makeup artist because of of Planet of the Apes because I wanted to know how they did it and uh, I went through a lot of trouble back in those days through articles, pictures, magazines, looking at makeup books and they had a making of Planet of the Apes uh, on television more than once that uh, I tried to uh, take pictures of off the screen uh, because I was a photographer and I had a dark room in high school so I'd take pictures off the screen uh, so I could study the molds that <laughs> they'd show and the rubber coming out of them. And you know, make a long story short, I learned how to do all that stuff. Did it so well that when I came to Hollywood, started going to conventions, I got picked up to work on the TV show. And plus met other makeup artists like Rick Baker, Joe Belasco, and John Chambers, <laughs> of all people. And it started my career. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, uh, start uh, sculpting General Ursus. Now the thing is, is, the actor was named was James Gregory, and you know his head and my head are a little different. So, uh, but it's always good to do things in my life mask because that's the way I can make sure they fit your face should you decide to wear it and all kinds of stuff like that. So, so here we go. Uh, I'm looking here at, and I and I'm remembering it. Luckily, this life mask, I left lots of clay on uh, already. I'm using some fresh clay to start off. Um, and I think, yeah, of course, my hands are always blocking it. Isn't that something? So I'm going to stand up. Because I like standing up as I work better. And I'm just going to start doing this. Luckily, I don't have any problems getting the clay to stick because I've sculpted so many things on this life mask. This isn't the only life mask I have of myself. So. Uh, it's been a while since I've done the gorilla. But we're going to start roughing this guy out. I would not obviously not finish today, but uh, I'll get pretty far. I usually start with the muzzle. And I know from the pictures, got one from the side here. It, te oh, it tells me how high up it should go. I do not like laptop mouse pads. And I need to see how wide the muzzle is. So I go back to another picture. Boy, it's like, it's as wide as here, right down to the middle of the eye. It's already got hair on it, so I'm that much further ahead. <laughs> now, I told you all I was going to do 
the Telosian. Uh, Lou Del Masso and, uh, really wanted one, and uh, several other people uh, asked about them. So I wanted to do that, but this, I had so many quests for this, and I can do this uh, yeah, quicker, um, more expediently. Um, and so I can take the money from the sales from this and put it into uh, another five to 10 gallons of latex. And also I need to uh, finish this to do the telosion. I will also need uh, more plaster to make the mold. And I also will need more wet clay. So that's a big order of stuff. So I'm gonna allow Planet of the Apes to, to fund that. Now I have to remember that this is not going to be a prosthetic. It's going to be um, a half face pullover, pull in the front of your face mask. So I don't, uh, I need to stand all this down, but I'm gonna start it out as a prosthetic and then add the extra clay for the rest of the mask. So, and we're gonna start getting this part in now. Get that muzzle just right. And it's pretty wide over here. And we're just going to rough it out as best I can before your very eyes. And obviously, there's jump cuts because if you actually sat and watched this for the full length of time it takes to do it, you might get kind of bored. Maybe you wouldn't, I don't know. Now I seem to recall having a set of General Ursus uh, prosthetics in my very hands. And, you know, the one I'm looking at is, it says it's from the original molds or recasting from the mold. I, I'm kind of not sure, not unless they had more than one kind, if it is or not, because of the way the bottom chin piece is connected to the top and they didn't do that. They were always separate in Planet of the Apes. So I'm not sure what the origins are of what I found, but it's all I could find on the net. And I have a pretty darn good memory of having the original prosthetics and even the molds in my presence because I was around all that stuff during the TV show and plus my old friend and studio thief, <laughs> Ricky Schwartz, thanks to him, most of that stuff was preserved for all time and is, resides in people's collections. So, um, but I got to see it firsthand and it helped me learn how they were done before I actually met John Chambers and Werner Kepler and Tom Berman and those people. Okay, so this is starting to look, you know, it's, it, it takes a long time to get everything shaped right and stuff, but I got the basics there. Now, his nose is rather heart-shaped. Not like any gorilla nose I've ever seen, but uh, I'm try to get this clay as warm as I can. And I may bring the camera in closer. It is so noisy here today. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's hard to get a video to you without all the noise. So, and it's cold cooler. Whoever did sculpt this prosthetic certainly did a good job. Um, I don't think they looked at actual gorillas much, but that's how things were in those days. Plus they were going for a look. We're just gonna rough this out. That's all we're gonna do today. So we got uh, a little bit of this action going right here, up to about the lips, dead center. And then we got this going like this. To at least get me in the ballpark. And a little more of this here. And then we're gonna kinda go up around here. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's getting there. This is just all doing this with, with uh, just my hands, no tools yet. I just want to get the, the shapes in there, get it masked out, and get it looking correct to my eye, which it, of course, never does at first glance, but it gets there in time. And uh, Rob Berman, if you're watching, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I can hear his thoughts. Uh, that's basically the nose shape. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very much like a pillow all the way up into here. And um, a little more of that pillow stuff going on here. And here. And I think everyone will agree it's starting to already kind of look like it. The basic rough out, so. This, uh, this is too shallow here that needs to be filled in. These things kind of sculpt themselves, they, they really do. Yeah, it's looking right from the side too, although it seems to me like this needs to be longer. So, well, we'll do that. No problem. Because I should not be able to see my mouth looking straight down at it. That's better. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that gets that pretty well to where I want it. Um, there's uh, quite a thickness coming through here on him, I see. Maybe if I sculpt backwards from the back here, you can see better what I'm doing. You know, I've been doing this stuff for years. I mean, over 50 years now. And when I first started doing this, it was like 1970, and it was very exciting. And I remember uh, making my first uh, prosthetic out of foam and sculpting the prosthetics. And I felt, geez, I can't describe the feeling. You know what? After all these years, I still get that feeling. You know, so many people uh, in the industry got burned out, they've done everything, it's not exciting to them anymore. And unfortunately, I can't understand it. I just, you know, and I say that because uh, I just can't relate to it. Uh, because I've never stopped being excited about this work. Never have. And I'm just looking at distancing and I'm really thinking that this needs to be down further, but I, could be wrong. And of course, I have to take into account that this is not on James Gregory's face, it's on my face. So we're going to go up here. And we're going to start working on the brow. I should do the bottom jaw, but I want to work on the brow. I'm just doing shapes. That's all I'm doing as I see them. And some of you watching for the first time are going to probably be thinking, well, how is that ever, this ever going to look like that prosthetic? It just looks like a bunch of mushy clay to me. And uh, stick with me. <laughs> because this is how they all start. Trust me. I've been around the block. This is not my first rodeo. 
So slowly but surely we start getting the, don't call me Shirley. Yeah. You know, I gotta do that lower jaw. I'm starting to realize, but we'll get there in a second. I just wanna get these shapes started next. And then uh, we get another one right about here. Just get, get it in the ballpark. And here we go. Okay, here we go. Ah, oh, you know, having arthritic thumb, I did not have back then. But the reason I have the thumb I have, and Doug Drexler and I have talked about this, is from exactly what you're seeing me do for right now. And I need that thumb, and I don't care how much it hurts. You know, the pain is sometimes absolutely excruciating. Uh, and I don't care, I'll just keep going, because you know what? It's just pain. That's all it is. It doesn't mean I can't do this stuff anymore. I can, and I will keep doing this stuff until I drop. So, thank you, Lori. <laughs> I can hear everything these people think and say and do around here because of my Superman hearing, which I've got from my, uh, my parents. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so all this stuff is here is going like this. Get it in the ballpark. Now we got another brow to do. And uh, what, what way are we at count wise on this? That's not telling me. Somewhere it does, but it's upside down. Tell me this is recording. <laughs> it is. I see the red light on, so I know it is recording. Okay, so now we need uh, that one. We need to get one right here, roughly in the ballpark. And then we gotta pump all this in. I still think this whole thing needs to come down further, longer. But that's all on the tweaking. We don't do that now. So this is how a clay sculpture starts. And, oh God, I'm whistling. The sign of age. Yeah, I'm whistling. Sipping cider on a Sunday afternoon on the porch, huh? <laughs> okay. And I'll see how shallow is that. How shallow was my gorilla? Come on, you stupid mouse. Well, not very shallow. See, doesn't it help when I walk around this way? Maybe. Anyway, so that's, you know, this is all needs to be narrowed down. Um, oh, that'll do it. And I can see it clearly. I can see clear. Uh, <coughs> uh, this needs to be narrowed down, down, and down to look more like the original. This uh, place where my studio is never used to be this busy. And uh, especially during COVID, and it still is during COVID, but these people think it isn't, so they're getting really busy. That's why it's so noisy here. Okay, that tool is not working for me. I can't find my scrubby tools, but I just want to get this down narrower. All right, enough of that. I'm, I'm wasting time here. We'll see how much clay this all takes. Now, um, doing the bottom jaw, I'm going to kind of like um, do it separately and make it removable to like get the inside clean. 
So when I sculpt it, I'm going to try to um, just push the clay on very lightly so I can pop it loose again, which is how we did that back then when we worked on such things as this. See, even you can hear everything they're saying. Isn't that amazing? And now the dog is going to work. But you're getting it all. You're getting the real SNG here, non-edited. Even when I say things like beep, and beep, and beep. Well, who's here? Why are you here? Don't knock at my door. I'm sculpting. It's more important than you are. And I'm going to keep on going regardless. So there you go. I feel better. OK, so slice down some more clay. Let's see if I go through a whole brick. It's a nice fresh brick here. Yeah, I whistled again. It's a nice fresh brick. Savory. Salty. And I didn't whistle any of those times. Okay, I'll just can keep getting this out here. Something oily on there. He's, he's got a he's got an undercut <laughs> uh, on his jaw. Um, that uh, uh, over he, he has an overbite is what I'm trying to say and uh, yeah so we'll get this in here and we're almost roughed out I mean you know right but I, I was going to cut the camera a few times and I figure you know I'll just leave it you know, evidently the mouth is sculpted very far open on this one and the mouth and the top are connected. And you know what? The more I'm thinking about it, the more I do have some memory of that, of saying, oh, gee, that's interesting. That appliance was different than the other ones. We call them appliances. We didn't call them prosthetics. So, I mean, technically speaking, they're a prosthetic. But, um, so I'm going to try to get this in here as best I can. And then I'll be able to move the whole thing and, and hold it in my hand, really work on it easily. Um, i got to go back and look at it straight on again. And of course, I'm getting clay all over my laptop. Oh, that is really wide open. Okay. Not sure why they did that, but we're going to do the same thing. Kind of a shallow chin. And then it's a little bit thicker down here. But as you can see, it's starting to look like a Planet of the Apes gorilla. So, but I, I don't think I've ever done it uncut before. A lot of you will click off after a while because it's too long. And I, I understand about attention span and people watching videos these days. They tend not to. <laughs> Some of you do. I do. But, you know, if you ever wanted to see how a Planet of the Apes appliance, or prosthetic, if you will, gets made, this is how they get made. This is how it was done back in the day. And even in the present. Complete with backup beepers. I mean, wouldn't be a day around here with more backup beepers. Of course, I would, you know, someone like me, I'd, I'd miss a huge semi truck backing up and it'd just run right over me. <laughs> right? <laughs> I've never liked those backup beepers because you know what they're for, don't you? Yeah, I'm going to remain silent and not tell you what I'm thinking. <laughs> Now, if I'm right, <laughs> I should be able to get this to come off. Now, I really need to stop myself before I go too much further, but because now you can see the whole thing and you, you get an idea. This is how it gets roughed out. And in part two <laughs> of this video, uh, you'll get to see the refinement work done. Now, this is Friday. 
And I've got things that I, I want to work on that have to do with what I do this weekend, like going flying and that kind of thing. But I should be able to get this loose. See, there, it worked. There, see? So now, see, I can get in there and I can do things like make the inside of the mouth a bit better and smoother and all that kind of great stuff. And if the weather stays uh, not hot, which it's starting to get warm today, after all, it's winter. It's supposed to be uh, 82 degrees outside uh, during winter because that's, that's the new normal. Yeah, because we have this condition uh, that we've created for ourselves that creates weather that uh, never used to exist at this time of year. That's a, how I'm going to put it. And uh, yeah, now I can shape this, this thing just right. Just the way they have it. And this is dropped way down here. I'm trying to get that same kind of profile that's in the picture. And you got to push this way up, push that way down like that, because it really is that way. That's almost exactly what they have. Yeah, truly. So, and it, but it's kind of open wider like that. There, that's it. Um, I will uh, widen up here or tilt back and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Now I'm getting clay over my fancy tripod. And you can see there, uh, there you go, clay on everything. But you, it, so obviously I am going to edit there. Okay, so um, it's getting there. I mean, that's it's it's a start. So we will do part two there. <laughs> so be sure to come back for part two, which will be next week, and you can see this get further along because Monday. I'm going to really turn this in to a finely detailed with texture and pores and wrinkles sculpture. Hope you enjoyed part one. I sure did.